Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a new piece of retro technology. This is called the Tiny Ness. And what this is, is a modern NES game console. And what's different about this one is that it doesn't rely on emulation or on an FPGA chip, but rather it incorporates the original NES CPU and graphics chip onto a modern open source motherboard. And it basically performs exactly like the original NES does, but with components that are modern and available. And we're going to take a closer look at this and see what it's all about in just a second. This is not going to be for everybody, but I think some of you watching might find it interesting nonetheless. And I want to thank a viewer, Handheld Obsession. You can check out his channel in the video description below, who let us borrow this because he thought a lot of you might be interested in it and wanted me to do a preview of it. So this is something that I greatly appreciate him sending to the channel. And in full disclosure, uh, no one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this modern NES console is all about. Now, the price point on this is $229. At the time I'm recording this video, it looks like they're going to have another batch ready to go by March 31st of 2023. And I'm guessing they'll be doing these things in batches. There is also one that has clone chips installed instead of the original NES chips. And that one's a little less expensive. But to be honest, if you're spending this much money on something like this, I think you're going to want the genuine experience. They've also sourced some 8-bit dough controllers. So you can get a wireless controller that plugs in. Or, of course, you can connect up your original NES game controllers. And if you have it plugged into a CRT television, your Zapper light guns will work also. And I think all of the other controller accessories like that four port adapter should also work. Now, here's the deal with this thing. Although it has modern hardware inside for its motherboard, they did not add any modern video output. So as you can see here, this is strictly composite out, not RGB component, no HDMI, it is outputting video exactly like the old NES did. However, the motherboard does improve the quality of the image, as you'll see in a few minutes. So this is going to be a very limited audience here for people that uh, maybe want a cleaner version of the original NES or perhaps have one that is failing and want one that they know is going to continue to work. And it looks like they found enough people to buy into it that they could actually make these things and sell them as a completed product. So just keep that in mind. No modern HDMI output, but the motherboard is open source. So you could design your own HDMI output and have your own version of this if you wanted to do that. Now, just a quick addendum. They will be offering an RGB kit for the console, but the genuine PPUs they ship with this at the moment do not have RGB support built in. So you'll have to source your own RGB compatible PPU. As you can see, the console itself is not very big. It's about the size of an NES cartridge. So it is a lot smaller than the original. Your games go in like so, and it will certainly look uh, a bit odd having this huge cartridge sticking up out of this like that. The one issue I've got with this is that it grips the cartridge extremely tightly. As you can hear, it doesn't want to let go. Um, so in many ways, it kind of reminded me of the Hyperkin console I reviewed a number of years ago that just has a vice grip on these cartridges. Now, they do have a little clamp here. This is called the cartridge latch. That's an accessory. And what you do is screw this onto the top, and it prevents the cartridge from getting knocked out because it is uh, relatively easy to knock around when it's in this position here. So it does secure it a little better. And I'm guessing the uh, latches here on the side might make it easier to eject the cartridge. But again, I was a little disappointed that the cartridge grip is so tight on this. Now, the controller ports, though, feel very nice. In fact, I remember my NES consoles having some really tight grips on the controller port. Uh, here, it's very easy to plug the controller in and take it back out again. So they did improve on that, but the uh, cartridge slot is a little too tight for my taste and comfort. Now, if you have Japanese Famicom games, they do offer an adapter for an additional charge, but really any adapter will do. One oddity, though, is that it looks as though the Famicom game labels have to face in the opposite direction of the NES games. So, for example, when we put baseball in here, the label faces forward. 
on this Famicom cartridge here, the label has to face backwards. Now you'll notice I've got an EverDrive N8 Pro here. This is the Famicom version. Uh, EverDrives work fine on this. We extensively tested this one out on a live stream the other day. Uh, not only did the uh, Famicom Disk System games work through this, also the games with the extra audio tracks like Castlevania 3 also worked on the console here with the cartridge. I don't believe that's something the original NES will allow to work, so you do pick up another little feature there. And I also found the NES version of the N8 to also be compatible. Uh, the developers of this, though, say that the Power Pack flash cartridge does not work with it, uh, but the EverDrives here do, and we'll boot one up in a little bit. Now, on the live stream the other day, we did take the top off the console to see what was inside. You can see it's got a very compact and clean layout here. And, of course, this one has the Genuine chips on board, at least according to the manufacturer. And so here is the CPU. And one of the things that I didn't know, believe it or not, was that the NES CPU, which incorporated essentially a 6502 processor, also has the sound hardware built into that chip. So this chip has both the CPU and the sound duties. And then, of course, you have the PPU processor, which is responsible for all of the graphics. And again, both of these chips uh, are the genuine article. They look to be almost brand new, so I don't know if they cleaned them up or whatever, uh, but I had to double check to make sure that they did label this a genuine unit given how clean those chips looked. And these are socketed, so you could pull these out and swap them out or do whatever down the road if you wanted to. And again, the whole motherboard design is open source. And in the box, they actually give you the full schematics here and the part list. And I think you can go to their website and actually download all of the uh, circuit board layouts and stuff too if you wanted to do this completely on your own. So let's take a look at this thing in action now. I'm running a game called AI Senshi Nikol. This is a Japanese floppy disk game that was available only in Japan. And I've got a few others that I'm going to show you from some direct captures I made earlier, uh, which I think will be a better representation of what the system is capable of here. One thing you're going to notice, and I'll go back into the game real quick, is that through my capture hardware, occasionally these balls here in the upper corner of the screen get a little bit of distortion going on every once in a while. And I think it's just a function of how I capture video in my live production set here. And that's one of the challenges that you deal with trying to capture component video. Now, I am running this through a RetroTINK 5X, which is a 1080p upscaler. That is also what we use for the direct captures, but I did just want to show it to you running here on the desk. Again, I think ideally the way to play this console is hooked up to a CRT television. Audio sounds very clean out of it. Again, it's using original NES hardware. You can hear what it sounds like. So overall, I think from a gameplay perspective, I didn't notice much of a difference from the original NES beyond the fact that the video looked cleaner and the audio was pretty crisp as well. Let's have a look at that montage now. So I think if you were to do a blind taste test of the tininess hooked up to a CRT television along with an original NES, a normal person probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference, but an enthusiast would notice a much cleaner video signal and slightly better audio. And I think for a lot of folks, that is probably something they'd be interested in, especially as this uses the original NES CPU and PPU. 
and I think there's enough people out there who find value in this concept to make a product, which is exactly what happened here. People pre-ordered it, and uh, those who got one, I think, are fairly happy with them so far. This is not a product that I would purchase. I'm happy with my FPGA stuff, but I know there are folks out there that are really uh, keen on preserving the original NES hardware, and this is a way to build a modern NES in 2023, yet using the original chips from those old game consoles that are slowly dying out there. And it's a great way, I think, to preserve the original NES hardware in a way that stays true to the original with great compatibility. Uh, but of course, you're only going to be getting composite video out of it. But I do think some folks are going to take this design and build upon it uh, because it is open source. So I'm interested to see what comes next uh, now that we have a fully functional open source NES out there that uses the original hardware. That's gonna do it for now. I wanna thank Handheld Obsession for letting us borrow this and check it out. And I would love to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.